Welcome to another edition of the Defoe Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. I stayed up late, watched that NCAA men's tournament title game. Was a classic in the end. Kansas, the number one seed, outlasted the number eight seeded North Carolina Tar Heels. Bill Self gets his second title. The school gets their fourth title. And it was fun talking about titles down here in South Florida. Miami Heat have really been the only consistent title contender. Well, the Florida Panthers, an organization that's sort of been uh, down in the doldrums the last couple of years, have started to turn it around. And this year have been among the NHL's elite and have been atop the Eastern Conference in the NHL all season long. We talked to Mr. Florida Panthers. No, we love to see Goldie Goldstein, the longtime voice of the Florida Panthers on the radio. Now Goldie's partner in the booth on TV for Bally Sports Florida. Firmly entrenched with the Florida Panther organization. The one and only Red Deer, Randy Moeller, joins us today to talk about how the Florida Panthers are trying to emulate the Miami Heat and how the Florida Panthers are trying to become that next consistent champion down here in South Florida. The Devo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. The one, one and only Red Deer, Randy Moeller. Are you with us, Red Deer, Randy Moeller? I'm with you. I'm with you, guys. Great to be on with you. Sound and look great. Wow, you you look great. I mean, this is fantastic. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. All right. uh, I mean, let's start with uh, some ugliness here. Uh, Mike Mayo. Uh, I know you know Michael. He covered the Panthers for a while uh, and, uh, you know, was with the Sun Sentinel. And for some reason, then he became the food critic. And I don't know if it's his antacid isn't working, but he's become very cynical about local teams. I guess, you know, there was a little problem there maybe with uh, some of the things that he was writing about the club. Uh, you know, somebody in the executive offices took exception with. They called him in there. They, they got ugly. So so he doesn't believe that the Panthers, and I can't, I find this inconceivable right there, Randy Muller, will get out of the first round of the playoffs, something that hasn't happened since uh, the 96-97 team, of course, went to the Stanley Cup finals. It seems unfathomable to me that as well as this team has played, that they would drop a first-round playoff series. Um I don't know. First, I guess, give us your characterization of the season because it's been spectacular. I mean, uh, dynamite at home, wire to wire. I mean, just a quality, quality representation. And of late, I mean, not only coming back from the grave against the Devils the other day, but then coming right back the next day and shutting a team out. They've really, really been good. How would you characterize the season? Yeah, it's been magical uh, this whole season. And and guys, uh, they've done it with uh, injuries. I mean, Alexander Barkov lift. Uh, missed what five five and a half weeks uh, uh injury and now the panthers are rolling along without their best defenseman and aaron ekblad um they have a lot of depth they got a lot of scoring put this in perspective the panthers are 28 and 6 on home ice and 24 of uh or 26 Of the 34 home games, the Panthers have scored four or more goals. 15 of those, they've scored five or more goals. Wow. So, obviously, it's it's based around the offense. The Panthers have so many players that are having career years offensively, and it's fun to watch and fun to broadcast these games. I mean, they're just wild. And the crowd at home at the FLA Live Arena. They're into the game. They expect the goals. The intensity and the atmosphere is is like a party every night and no different tonight when the Toronto Maple Leafs come to town. Oh, uh, this is great, Red Deer, and uh, I don't mean to insult any of our Canadian friends here. Uh, of course, uh, you know, your origins. But, uh, you know, after the uh, Toronto game, uh, all of those people from Toronto, which is not as heavy as uh, Montreal, when they lost uh, at the... Uh, uh, Florida Live Arena, uh, just, uh, what, last week? Did you see that? Uh, all you saw was Jema Souvienne heading north. <laughs> right after the game, everybody went back to Montreal there. Yeah, we're here for the summer. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so so hopefully uh, th- there'll be another big win over the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. Now, now, early in the season, these guys were cardiac kids, yep, yep. and it, it was spectacular because, you know, the last few minutes of a hockey game, especially when a team's down like one goal, and the other, you know, they, they pulled the goalie there, so they're vulnerable there if the other Four team gets three. the puck. And, and they would just put immense pressure on everybody. And, and they pulled a lot of games out of their ass uh, early in the season. And, and that was great. And that was yeah. all part of that big home record. Yeah, it is. And and that just shows the, the offensive prowess that this team has on a nightly basis. They just have so many weapons. And, and when you've got uh, – you know, two, possibly 30 goal scorers playing on the third line. 
Uh, that just shows the depth that you have. And, and, and I just love the way they play. The, 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 it's the up-tempo, the speed of the game. Everything's about speed and offense in the NHL right now. And the Panthers have hit it out of the ballpark so far this season because of that. And when you add in, you know, they, they're getting great goaltending as well. Sergei Bobrovsky's coming in. He's won seven straight. He's 23-1 and one in his last 27 games. I mean, wow. It, it, it's Jesus. amazing. So yeah. Mayo thinks he's going to fall apart <laughs> in the playoffs. So all of a sudden, he's going to go blind or something. Well, I, I, you know, I'll get back to your original question about yeah. uh, you know, in the first round. It, in the Eastern Conference, there's going to be four teams. Or obviously, eight teams make uh, make the playoffs. There's going to be four teams that that have had phenomenal years that are going to be out in the first round. Mm. That's how competitive it is. Wow. And you know, the Panthers with 102 points, with 14 games remaining, they still, uh, you know, they're only seven points up from the Toronto Maple Leafs for first in the Atlantic Division. Well, I've never seen this before, where they could possibly go down to the last week of the season with 114 points and still not clinch the division. But I can tell you, the Panthers, they want that home ice advantage. They want to win the division. They'd, le- they'd love to win the conference. They're battling Carolina as well for the conference because they get home ice advantage. Let me go back. The Panthers are 28-6 and six on home ice. So they want that home ice advantage in the first and the second round of the playoffs for sure. Well, and, and Mueller, man, and we're talking about the one and only Red Deer Randy Muller uh, with Valley Sports Florida. Analyst also with the Panthers, been with them a long time. And the guy we love to go to when we talk Panthers. What's interesting about this team is they're more offensively inclined, which they haven't always been, but they feel tougher, right? Like at the end of these games, a lot of the time, and a lot of time in the shootouts, you would just sort of, well, that one's a loss. Like this team is never out of it. And that's something that we haven't seen in years past. And, and I, a lot, look, we say this a lot in basketball, like a young team has to go up against the giant to learn something. And it feels like they learned a lot from that lightning series. As much as they went and defeat the lightning said, even after they won the cup, the toughest series they had all playoffs was the Panthers. So that's the kind of thing it feels like. That's sort of why I'm not as concerned. It's not that the Bruins or the Capitals aren't good. It's that this team just plays with a different kind of oomph that, than we've seen in the years past. Yeah, I think it's a lot of the experience now. You, know, you, you look now at Barkov. Huberto, Huberto's in what is his 10th year. Yeah. Uh, Barkov's ninth year. Uh, Ekblad, what, seventh year. Uh, it goes on. These guys now have the experience. And... You know, the general manager, Bill Zito, realized that these players are not young anymore and they're not old. They're in the prime of their career. And that's the reason why they brought in these players, because they're going for it this year. This is the year right now, the best opportunity for the Panthers to go deep and possibly challenge for the Stanley Cup. So many years before, guys, you remember the Panthers towards the trade deadline. They're trading mm. players. They acquire picks and future considerations. That's all gone. The, the fans, including myself, don't want to hear about draft picks anymore. <laughs> this is the team. They have enough depth. The, the The cupboards are not bare as far as players coming that are, that are playing in the American Hockey League and the drafted players that are playing in college and junior hockey. But – They've they they've given up their their first round draft pick for the first for the next couple of years. And the reason they're doing that is because they're all in right now. Guys like Reinhardt that they gave up first round draft pick. Um, look what he's done this year, the season that he's had. It, 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 I mean, there's so many they could possibly have 17 players on this hockey club that will have career years. Wow. That's how phenomenal is and it seems like every night yeah we talk about Huberto and and leads the NHL in assists and he's just shattering team franchise records and an NHL record for the most points in a single season assists in a single season uh, for a left winger this is the highest scoring team in the NHL guys over the last 25 years that's saying a lot nice wow I keep thinking, holy uh, Marcel Dion, man. This Huberto <laughs> is, is to uh, passing the puck what John Stockton was to passing a basketball uh, or Magic oh. Johnson. I, I, he, he really is magical out there. Uh, and it's interesting. It's hard to believe, Randy. And we're talking with Red Deer Randy Moeller of the broadcast team uh, with the Florida Panthers and does virtually everything else uh, as well. I, I think, aren't you also like the food manager and uh, <laughs> <laughs> food and beverage? 
backup yeah. Zamboni driver. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> do it all there uh, with the Panthers. <laughs> and a fantastic job. But uh, great with Steve Goldie Goldstein on the uh, telecast, the broadcast uh, of the game. But uh, uh, th- this guy it really is magical, uh, Huberto, in terms of passing the puck. I mean, uh, you would have to say, and, and hard to believe that he's been with the club 10 years, because I remember when Goldie and I would have him uh, on the show when we were doing a radio show together. And uh, he's like, I think I can get Jonathan Huberto. And we're like, uh, okay, maybe not the most compelling speaker, but, uh, you know, even that area, he, he has vastly improved. And it's hard to believe that was 10 years ago that, that yeah. he came well, into the league. Yeah. And, and Deepo, I like, I like to tell the story. I tell it quite a bit. Remember a few years ago, it was, what, four years ago now, that uh, Jonathan Huberdeau, um tore his Achilles yep. tendon yep. in his leg. Before that, we all knew and everybody knew that he was a good player, but it was the consistency really wasn't there night in night out. And I give him full marks. He went after that injury and really worked on his lower body, his legs, his trunk, everything to have the strength and the balance and to be able to protect that puck. Well, what has happened since then? Jonathan Huberdeau has, has, uh, 354 points in 306 games wow. since, since he came back from that injury. Um, and I, it's all on Jonathan Huberto and the maturity that he shows, the confidence because he has that strength to hang on to the puck and his vision of seeing the players around him and to set them up and to be able to have that strength to hang on to that puck for just an extra second to allow – his line mate to get into that perfect shooting position or to receive that pass in order to go in and, uh, and score a goal. I, I, I've been around this game a long time. There's only uh, a few players. Wayne Gretzky's obviously one of them, Mario Lemieux, that have, have that ability to pass that puck like that. So, uh, again, Jonathan Huberdeau with uh, the accolades that he's uh, gaining and rightfully so this season, he's just won of so many players. I mean, Alexander Barkov's going in. I mean, he's got a six game point streak. Jonathan Huberdeau has got an eight game point streak. Huberdeau has 20, uh, he's got points in 23 of the last 24 games. Wow. There's no, there's no player in the NHL that's even close to that. So it's just fun guys. It's such a fun atmosphere. And you know, when I do my preparation, like tonight, they're playing the Toronto Maple Leafs and yesterday is, just making my some some of my notes, getting ready for the game. The the all the stats just it, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, it'd be like a, an NFL team that uh, is fifteen and old, and you're preparing for the that next Sunday. Well, obviously everything's positive in the stats and 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 that and that just what makes it fun. But I can tell you, and you guys know, I've been on with you many many times that. It wasn't too long ago where, oh boy, you know, you'd have me on and oh, well, red here, right, here we oh, go. plus five of the last six, and picking up uh, the six plus goals and four of the last six. What? I'm just so glad that uh, those days are over, and I'm most happy for is the fans, the fans that have stuck. It, they, the Panthers have great fans. The crowds have been incredible at their home arena. And I'm just so happy for them. They're enjoying the success. And like I said, just a couple of minutes ago, it's a party atmosphere. Every game, nice. these fans show up and they expect that the Panthers are going to score five, six, seven, sometimes eight goals. And more times than not, they do. No, it's great. And, uh, you know, the crowd uh, might, uh, you know, uh, improve by two more. Well, I'm <laughs> Luby, uh, to, to this point. In the interview, Randy has refrained from uh, snoring for tickets for the uh, playoff games yet. So, believe me, that's coming at some point. I mean, I don't know if it'll happen on the show, but it's a little embarrassing. Luby, you make me cough. You make me I know. cough. Don't die on us, uh, Red Deer. We need and he'll ask you for like six tickets, too. Okay? Hey, you got to take my little cousin. It's like, you know, Get the uh, those out days, of here with that. Those yeah. days are long yeah. gone. Those yeah. days are long gone. The but, are probably but with all the success, yeah. with all the success that the Panthers have had so far, and they got 14 games left in the regular season, comes expectations now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, if if for some reason things don't go well and they get bounced don't out even mention in, it, in yeah. the first oh, round, um, it, it is, it is, it's going to uh, leave a, a sour taste in a lot of mouths and, and that. But they're going about their business. Uh, they continue to win games, uh, different offensive heroes every night. How about the defense? 
the defense of the Florida Panthers, even now without Aaron Eckblad. Here's another stat that I like to run out. There's only one team, and it's the Colorado Avalanche, that have produced more points from defensemen so far this season than the Florida Panthers. Oh, wow. And so when, when you've got that five-man attack where the defense are joining the rush, being active in the offensive zone, another option for Huberto or whoever to pass to, the defenseman coming in on each on the right or the left side, wow, it is almost impossible to stop defensively. And the Panthers have, have, have got that me- attack mentality that has carried them through the whole season. A few years ago, I mean, uh, this guy was must-see TV if he was on with the Philadelphia Flyers, Claude Giroux. Oof. And the Panthers make that acquisition. And I, I, I don't know, I haven't seen Giroux recently because Philadelphia's been a bad team. But where does he fit in and, and where is he at uh, at this point in his career? And uh, how do you see his his talents being used by the Florida Panthers? Wow, this is just a, another another aspect where the, the Panthers are all in. You know, they give up a pretty good package to get – Claude Giroux. Um, there's a number of reasons why. Number one is, I'll start with this. When you have guys like Anthony Duclair, you've got Reinhardt, you've got Joe Thornton uh, and others, this has become a destination. Players around the league, it's it's almost like, you know, when uh, Tom Brady went to Tampa Bay or whatever, everybody's uh, like calling their agent going, uh, I, I, get me to Tampa Bay. I want to play yeah. for Tampa Bay or whatever. It's become a destination because of the potential and the talent base that they have here. So let me, let's me let go to Claude, Claude Giroux. He's one of the best face-off men. He's number two in the NHL in face-off wins. And you guys all know, you're hockey fans and you're knowledgeable. When you've got a guy that can win those draws, oh, yeah. first thing that happens is you've got puck possession. Yep. You, pos- you possess the puck. And what happens when the Panthers possess the puck, especially in the offensive zone? Scoring chances after scoring chances. He wants to win. He's never won a Stanley Cup. He's been close. He lost to Chicago a couple a few years ago in the finals. He knows he's at the in the twilight of his career. He wants to win a Stanley Cup. That's the reason why he only waived his no trade contract to come to Florida because he wanted. He didn't want to go to anywhere else. He wanted to come to Florida. They worked out the deal. His experience, and I don't know if I've been around a, a, a player, guys. And I remember so many games I'm between the benches, and I'm so close to the to the players and watch and listen and that. And every time the Panthers would play against the Flyers, I'd watch Giroux and his demeanor coming back to the to the bench or whatever. He's all business. All he wants to do is win, and he has fit in like a glove on the Florida Panthers since being acquired. He hasn't scored yet. But he's got seven assists in seven yes. games, and his leadership and the way that he has blended in with the leadership of the Panthers, it's been perfect so far. I used to love watching that guy play. I mean, uh, he, he was spectacular oh, yeah. with the he's Flyers. He's a point a game. Point yeah. a game. He gets a point every That's game. Crazy. Yeah, no, no, great stuff. Red Deer Randy Moeller of the uh, Panthers broadcast team with us here on the Defo Show here on I on Channel. Uh, all right, uh, wh- where do they stack up? I mean, uh, they've been the best uh, for most of the season. You mentioned the Colorado Avalanche, kind of been in a dogfight. Most of the analysis that I read about the National Hockey League, Randy, uh, says that, well, Colorado is the team to beat. Yeah, uh, You're you're talking about uh, a lot of parity at the top level and all the way down uh, through the playoffs. Uh, and, uh, you know, all of the teams in the Eastern Conference uh, in there with a shot. I mean, obviously – you know, uh, we're a little fearful of having to pick up a tab at runway 84 <laughs> with Mayo, uh, you know, ordering everything on the menu. If you have to face Ovechkin, uh, who, you know, is a brilliant yep. scorer. And uh, I mean, the Boston Bruins, from what I can gather, are a pretty tough team and they're there at the bottom. So uh, what do yeah, you think? I mean, tough. is there any chance that we're going to have to take out a quick claim deed on the townhouse in order to cover this wager? Uh, you know, because. I can't conceive of it. The season this team has had, if they got knocked out on the first round of the playoffs, I, I absolutely would be as flabbergasted uh, by any circumstance as I've ever witnessed in sports. And you know I'm a degenerate gambler. I've seen everything. I've seen my horse on the lead <laughs> jump the rail at Gulfstream and end up in the lake, right? <laughs> when I need to get out money, uh, you know, so I, anything can happen, obviously. But it really seems impossible to conceive that with the move like uh, getting Giroux and, yeah. and all the chemistry they had, all year in a high-scoring offense, and Bobrovsky back on his game. I, I just I can't see them not contending for the Cup this year. Well, as I said when you know earlier when we were chatting about about this, uh, the the there's so much talent and great 
teams in the Eastern Conference. Okay, so let's pick it apart. Uh, any team, if the Panthers end up playing, let's start with uh, Washington Capitals. Any team with Alex Ovechkin on the team is going to be dangerous. And I like to say it's not going to be a church picnic. It's not going to be a, 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 <laughs> just a rollover. Um, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, any team that's got Sidney Crosby and Latang and, and Evgeny Malkin are going to be dangerous. The Boston Bruins, they continue to win. And that number one line with uh, Bergeron and, and uh, Marshawn, uh, they, they continue uh, to score goals and to win games. Uh, I think that there's small little flaws in their, in their team, uh, deficiencies that maybe the Panthers can take advantage of. But the point I'm trying to make is there's no Hartford Whalers uh, that you're playing in the first round that you're going to be <laughs> straight. There, the, the, it, just, it just doesn't exist, and it's going to be tough. And like I said, there's going to be four teams in the Eastern Conference that are going to be out in the first round that have had close to 100-point seasons. Jesus. And that's going to be very disappointing to their fans and obviously to the teams. Uh, how good is Colorado in, in your opinion? Uh, very good. Very yeah. good. They, they, there's no weakness on the Colorado Avalanche. And besides the Florida Panthers, they're the fastest team in the NHL. And I'm going to throw in, I'll get back to Colorado in a second. The, the Carolina Hurricanes play yes. a very similar uh, up-tempo speed game with lots of offensive weapons. I'm not quite sure if I'm sold on their goaltending. Uh, right now, and we all know goaltending wins, just ask the Tampa Bay Lightning and, and Vasilevsky. Um, that's the only reason the Panthers did not win that series against Tampa Bay last year was uh, Vasilevsky, their goaltender. Their goaltending was better than ours and uh, better than the Panthers, and um, that that's the reason why. So um, Colorado, Carolina, and the Panthers are the fastest teams in the NHL. Again, the Toronto Maple Leafs, they just went in last night and beat the defending Stanley Cup champions, what, 6-2. to two. Austin Matthews is up to 54 goals. I don't think I want to play the Toronto Maple Leafs in the first round, um, especially they're, they're pretty tough on home ice. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be very competitive, and I love it. I, I think it's it, it, it makes for great playoff intensity hockey, and that's what everybody likes to see. It's the greatest game in the world, and everybody knows. They, everybody talks about the playoffs. Oh, did you see that game? I'm a, look at this, the, the series that the Panthers had with Tampa Bay last Oof, year. That was, was great. Was a war. That was a war. All yeah. six games yep. were amazing. The intensity, the physicality in that. I can't wait. I can't wait, but we still got 14 games to go. I wish yeah, the playoffs would crazy. start tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, well, all, all of a sudden, uh, I feel the ice might be a little bit thinner. <laughs> and I was ready to have Mike Mayo Baker acted for, uh, you know, making this wager in the first place. I mean, you, you know, when a guy's just walking into a losing situation, having bet many of those straight superfectors uh, at the dog races during your uh, lifetime, Red Deer. Well, Not maybe, maybe, maybe Michael Mayo, maybe he just had a bad tiramisu terra, or something at one of his uh, <laughs> restaurants. He uh, he's eating like he's going to the chair, Red Deer. I mean, he really is. You know, I keep encouraging oh, I love him. Michael. I, he's, he's great. I <laughs> run into him every once in a while and, uh, and that. It's always great to catch up and that the history of the coverage of the Florida Panthers and that, but I'm most happy for the fans. They've enjoyed the ride so far, but I know they're looking um, that, uh, yeah, great regular season, but it's going to be in the playoffs that that's, that's going to count. You know, it's great too, uh, Red Deer, uh, with this run of the Panthers uh, you now, and, and once they, uh, they've they clinched a playoff spot, first team to do that, yeah. and once they're in the postseason, everybody will be a hockey expert again. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? Well, well, and, and telling, well, hey, what are you kidding me? You can't throw that guy out there in this situation. And like, having not seen a game all year. Right? And guys like us will, will join right in. Well, that's what makes it fun. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody, you wouldn't be making comments like that. Oh, he should have played this yeah. goaltender. He should have played this guy, whatever. If you, if you weren't interested in it yep. and you weren't, um, you know, invested in it. Yep. And that's what, that's what makes it fun. I mean, social media right now is just, is so much fun uh, in Panther land and the way the fans are interacting and, and that kind of stuff. It, it's, it's great. I love seeing it. And I see these fans on a daily basis and they're just so excited the way this team has been built and built very quickly. 
All right. Well, we'll tune in tonight. Uh, we'll watch you say hello to our buddy Steve Goldie Goldie Goldstein. Man. Of course, does a fine job on the play-by-play. Red Deer, it's a pleasure watching you uh, doing these games. It's been fantastic, yep. and it's a lot of fun tuning in. As uh, every time you turn on the TV, the Panthers uh, in most of these situations are winning, Man, it's and they're uh, winning substantially. So uh, it's been terrific, and um, hopefully uh, we'll be uh, dining. The muscles are free at uh, Runway 84, <laughs> and and that's all Mayo intends to order for anybody that is having to uh, buy dinner for that night. But I, I believe it's going to happen, and and we thank you for uh, all of the uh, insight. It's always a pleasure, my friend, and you look great, by the way. Hey, you look good. Oh well, thanks, guys. Thank you very much for having me on, and uh, I'll, I'll jump on again uh, uh, before we get going with playoffs and yes. we'll do a little preview of yeah. who's uh, going to be on in the first round All right. and expect a text from luby sometime soon uh, <laughs> i think i lost his massive number. amounts but yeah I don't know. lose your number right here on here. just lose all right number, all right thanks for having me on guys great thanks stuff uh, red deer randy Mahler, ladies and gentlemen one of the all-time classics man that was a good time talking with the one only red deer randy Mahler. the miami heat have been the one organization in my lifetime that has been a consistent winner of the florida panthers came on the scene hot in the late 90s, and then sort of fell flat, and it's been like two decades where they've tried and tried and tried. Finally, it looks like they're succeeding. It may be a tough first round. We still have that bet with Mike Mayo, and we're all in on it. I expect them to have a deep run in the playoffs and try and be that next consistent winner down here in South Florida along the heat as the Dolphins are trying really hard. Got the Marlins coming up soon. Florida Panthers, double-digit games left in the regular season, and then we get the playoffs, and we can, we'll can we see if those Panthers can be like our Miami Heat. Again, thank you to Red Deer Randy Muller for joining us. This has been the Devo Show with Luby. Check us out every morning from 7 to 9 on the Ion Channel. Just Google the Devo Show, D-E-F-O. Tomorrow we have our highly apart trivia challenge. Get in. Get your chance at a landlubber's gift certificate. Just call 954-417-0070. And check us out on the Believe Network today. Our guest is Ion Eagle. Yes, that Ion Eagle, number two for CBS NFL. I think it's two or three. CBS College Basketball, and two or three or one for TNT NBA Basketball. Also, he is the voice of the Brooklyn Nets. We love him. He was on all the St. Peter's games, and he was with us today. The Believe Network, the one and only CBS Sports own. I am Eagle for Defo. I am Luby. Thank you for tuning in to the Devo Show with Luby right here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Recently, we realized it's not just hurricane season that can hurt us. Any time of year, things can happen to your home or business. And the insurance company can be your friend, but they also can be your enemy. Horizon Public Adjusters, Justina Testa, are here for you to help this process go so much easier. Before you call the insurance company, call Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa at 954-809-8752. Would you go into court without an attorney? So why would you go up against an insurance company without Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa? Seven to 10 times more money recovered with a public adjuster than if you went on your own. If there's no recovery, there's no fee, give them a call at 954-809-8752. Why go up against insurance companies alone when you can have Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa on your side? Hey folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapist, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion, unmatched, and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this, if you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled caring people, there is truly only one place. And that one place is Catholic Health Services.